programs allow you to connect more individually with more people in your market than any other media that's possible, with little exception. All right? This leaves people who just plain feel more comfortable listening to you. And when people feel more comfortable listening to you, they're more comfortable following your recommendations, which will lead to what? What will that lead to? Go ahead and type that into the questions box. That will lead to money. That's the answer I'm looking for. All right? That will lead to money. Because if you recommend certain things to them that will help solve their problems, they have no trouble exchanging money for that. All right? Here's the deal. Bought the new MacBook Pro. I'm sitting in the office one night. I don't know anything about Apple. I'm an old school PC guy. What do I do? I want to buy a program to upload stuff, an FTP program, right? I know what works good for Windows. I have no idea what works for Mac. What do I do? Do I go and start doing Google searches? No, because what am I going to find? A whole bunch of crap pages that are a thinly disguised affiliate pitch page, right? Do I get on Facebook and do I type in, hey, to my social crowd, do you know something? Probably not, because there's too much noise on there. What do I do? I turn to my trusted advisor and I ask them. Send them a text message. Say, hey, what do you think I should buy? And they tell me, okay? <laughs> Money! That's what this leads to. I turn to, in this day of confusion and so many choices, I turn to the person who I know has the answer that I can trust. And I take that recommendation. And if that's a recommendation to buy something, awesome. Because they make money. You make money if you can build that identity. Again, video can kind of do it. The written word can kind of do it. Webinars can do it in a way that none of those other medias can. Which leads to the first biggest blunder I have been seeing committed on webinars over and over again. Every time Will and I talk... Uh, I probably bring this up, and he's probably sick and tired of me hearing it, but it's the phrase, you guys, all right? How many times do you get on a webinar, and somebody says who's presenting, referring to the crowd, you guys? Would it be fair to say that that happens more than 50% of the time? Yeah. Would it be fair to say that happens more than 75% of the time? You guys, you guys, you guys should listen to this. What do you guys think about this? Is this something you guys can really get excited about? You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. That's stupid, okay? If you do nothing else, if you do nothing else after today from watching this webinar, do this. Remove you guys from your vocabulary completely. All right? Remove it from your vocabulary completely. You guys. That's the kiss of death on a webinar. Let me tell you why. This is why it would suck for you as a presenter to use the term you guys. First of all, it will hurt your sales. Unless you're in a pickup artist niche where your whole audience is male, or some weird niche where your whole audience is male, you guys immediately can alienate some of your audience. Now, I know that there's some females that will say, well, I don't care if people call me you guys. And heck, there's some women who use the term you guys when they do webinars, right? But there are a portion of the audience who gets offended when they hear that term. Feminist? I don't know. It's just offensive. It can be offensive. And there's no reason to alienate your audience from something so simple as one word that you can easily correct and then never use again. It will hurt your sales. It also hurts your sales because you're focusing on your webinar as being communicated with a group. I never, ever, ever sit down and write a webinar presentation, whether it's for selling something or fulfilling something that people paid for, for training, right? Regardless, I never sit down and write it from a perspective of I'm, I'm speaking to a group because I'm never speaking to a group on a webinar. I'm always speaking to a collective set of individuals, but we can even do better than that. I'm always speaking to people who want to make more money in my case and hopefully want to do so incredibly fast, unreasonably soon, and make as much money as damn possible in as little time as we have on this earth, right? <laughs> I never look at it as I'm talking to an audience. I'm always talking to the individual right in you, and that's how I affect you, and that's how I get you excited to actually make changes and better your life and make more money. Because that's what I'm all about, making more money, right? 
you guys is an epidemic. It's an issue because the person writing the presentation will not be able to connect with you as easily one-to-one. -one. Will not be able to get you to actually feel good about information, which will be more likely for you to actually take action on it and solve the problem you want to solve, get the result that you want to get. You guys is just basically trying to be everybody to everyone. And when you're everybody to everyone, you're nobody to no one. And when you're nobody to no one, you pretty much don't even exist. And you can't make money that way. Here's the other thing. People buy from people who are personable. People buy from people who are personable. All things being considered. I'm looking at two different things to purchase. Do I purchase from the person who pissed me off, or do I purchase from the person who made me happy? Eh? Probably the person who makes me happy. So when you start thinking at this level, this micro level, of uh, using terms like you guys, you start really focusing on being more personable. And when you're more personable, people connect with you more. And when that happens, what happens when people connect with you more because you're more personable? Guess what happens? You make money. Now on the flip side, and this is what's really hurt in the industry, okay? People now see, oh, this guy's doing a webinar. Immediately there's this knee-jerk reaction, like, ugh. <laughs> Webinars are not associated anymore with pleasure because people have abused them and used them incorrectly for so long. So that's why I say I'm pissed off when I see all these poor webinars being done because it makes it harder for guys like Will and I to get people on a webinar. Because they, they compare our webinars without ever being on one to somebody else's that they were on who did it incorrectly. And I'm like, ugh. I'm like, i got to teach everybody how to do them right. So more people will want to get on webinars more often. And so as an attendee, if the presenter is not focused on the individual on you, not only is the value of information declining, but the feeling that you have towards using that information suffering. And basically you're wasting your time, and they're wasting their time. second biggest blunder I'm seeing be committed this day in the webinar. So we talked about the three things, the three big changes from 2010 to 2000 now that people aren't picking up. Then we talked about the first biggest specific blunder on a webinar itself. Here's the second one. It's not the presentation, okay? It's not in a presentation at all. It's an event. Webinars are not presentations, really. We might refer to them as presentations. But webinars are actually, in their truest form, an event, okay? Think about it this way. A web page is something that is available to everyone at all times. CNN.com is always available to you. Any, any web story on there can pretty much be bookmarked and found later, okay? And even if it gets removed from the Internet, we can go to archive.org and still get access to it. A web page is something that is available to everyone at all times. A webinar is something that occurs one time only and available only to a limited number of people. All right, here's the deal. I started at the top of the hour. We're now 38 minutes in. These are 38 minutes neither one of us will ever be able to get back that we commonly shared on this earth together that nobody else can say they shared who wasn't here. This is our stuff. This is our time together, okay? A webinar is something that occurs one time only and available only to a limited number of people. If you weren't here, you'll never be able to get here. It's not like a web page. This is the difference. Webinars in their truest, purest forms are events, not presentations. Therefore, if you're going to use a webinar to say sell something, and you truly understand this as an event, then you should be doing this. Make it special. If it's an event and you're going to sell something at this event, it should be special because the event itself is special. It should be limited. Okay? And that's one of the best ways you can make it special. To say, hey, you chose to take some of your time out to spend with me to better yourself. And at the same time, I'm taking some time out of my day to spend with you to better myself, so let's work out something that's awesome and limited just to, you know, us for a little bit of time, maybe limited in quantity and maybe limited in how long it's available for, right? Finally, it should be pers personalized. If you're going to be selling something, it should be personalized. 
So do you suppose that I talk to every single audience the same way when I do a webinar presentation? Only if uh, I don't have time, because it definitely will cost me more money. You personalize. Now this is the, the brilliant thing about it, okay? For, you're on my list. You're on this webinar because you're already on my email list. For the most part, there was a couple of affiliates who reached out and said, hey, Jason, I know this is going to be awesome. Can I let my people know about it? We said, sure, but we didn't try to tell anybody about it. They just came on and they asked us. Okay, but for the most part, you're probably here because I sent you an email and you know who I am already. I'm speaking with you differently than I would be speaking towards an affiliate whose people probably don't know who I am. Have you noticed how candid I am with you? <laughs> There's a specific reason for that. This is an event. It should be special. It will be limited, and it's personalized. I'm speaking directly to you in the ways that I know you as a customer that I may not know somebody else that an affiliate could send me or for pay traffic, et cetera, or et cetera, right? Now, here's the beautiful thing. How hard is it to personalize on a webinar? And the answer, not very hard at all. Not very hard at all. Now, if you're thinking about it as a presenter, this is a presentation, not an event. Here's why this is not a good thing. And here's why this is a big blunder, and this is why I don't want you committing it, all right? You're using a bomb to kill a spider, okay? You can kill the spider with the bomb, but you'll still probably blow off a chunk of your arm in the process, all right? If you're not going to make it an event, it shouldn't be a webinar in the first place, okay? If it can be handled with a simple sales page, if it can be handled with a squeeze page, if it can be handled with a blog post, if it can be handled with a, a, a tweet, there's no reason to make it a webinar. All right? Then you're actually doing a disservice to yourself and to everybody who you could potentially reach. Do you understand that? Do you know why that is? Because webinars involve a commitment. If people are going to spend time with you personally, take an hour out of their schedule, and you dilly-dally around and you give them stuff that could have been done on a web page, you're using a bomb to kill a spider. All right? You're not using the media correctly because you don't understand this is an event, not a presentation. Okay? As an attendee, of course, this sucks because you can miss out on a lot of things. The simplest thing is it wasn't limited. It wasn't personalized. It wasn't special. You got what you could have got if you would have went directly to a web page. So you wasted the event. You wasted your time. The presenter wasted their time. Huge blunder. Unfortunately, I see this being committed every single day. In fact, Wilson and I have now developed a whole new criteria that drives me nuts when this happens. We, we bring a couple affiliates on who have really good products to do a webinar and present to our email list, right? And so you might have saw some of this since you're on the list, right? Where at the end they'd give an offer, but it wasn't a special offer. And we'd be like, oh, we thought you we thought you just knew it should be a special offer, but they didn't understand this. And now this happens to where we specifically ask people ahead of time, what's the special offer? Because if you don't have one, there ain't going to be no webinar, right? Unreasonable expectations. This is a huge blunder. The third biggest individual blunder. So we talked about the three things that have changed since 2010. We talked about two of the biggest individual blunders. Here's the third and final one. Unreasonable expectations. Earlier I showed you this big number. Over $120,000 from a single webinar from the start of the webinar till the end of the webinar. Okay? And that might not even have been my best one. I think I've done better than that. I'm not sure. But I've done a, a couple webinars that have done over six figures. Okay? Do I expect every single webinar that I do where I'm going to be selling something to do six figures? No. I mean, it'd be great if that happened, but I don't expect that. <laughs> I don't expect that at all. All right? Check this out. So I've done consulting now for the last four years or so, and I'm pretty cool with it. I'm just like 250 an hour, 250 bucks an hour, and we get on and we talk for an hour. And that's been my rate for the last four years. And frankly, I need to raise it. I've needed to raise it for a year or two now because we're absolutely overbooked. And the main reason people book us and uh, go to my assistant and book a time to spend on the phone with me for an hour is nine times out of ten I'm doing a, a consultation to help them improve their webinar presentation. 
that's pretty much all I do these days on my consultant. 250 bucks, they plop it down, and they say, help me with this webinar, Jason, because it's not making that money. Or they say, I want to do a webinar, Jason, help me prepare the presentation. So I spend one hour on the phone from scratch, because an hour doesn't include any prep time. If they send me over stuff to look at ahead of time, I look at that while I'm dialing in, because they pay for an hour, they get an hour, right? Recently, I had a consultant client come to me and said, hey, Jason, I want to take my business to doing six figures a month in the next 90 days. All right? I'm doing about $50,000 a month right now, and I want to double that in three months. And he's all excited. He probably just listened to some, some like, Tony Robbins tape or something, and it's all jacked up, right? This positive thinking, oh, you know, we can move the world if we just have a big enough lever type of stuff, right? He wants to go and jump from $50,000 a month to $100,000 a month, and he wants to do so in 90 days, okay? What is my answer? If you had to guess, what was the first thing I said to him after he went through this whole thing about how he wants to make 50, he wants to take his $50,000 income and make it $100,000? What do you suppose I said to him? <laughs> All right? This is what I said to him. And by the way, I was reading the answers. They're pretty funny. I like the answers, okay? This is what I said to him. I said, you know what? It's absolutely possible, given the right set of circumstances, to go from $50,000 a month to $100,000 a month in three months or less. It is absolutely possible to do that. However, maybe it's not the best goal for you to have. And then I asked him, why do you want to make $100,000 a month? as opposed to $50,000 a month. What's the motivation behind that? And then when I found out his answer, it was very clear to him. It was not going to solve the big problem that was pressing him. He had this problem, and he figured, uh, you know, if I just do more of my business, it will go away. It'll solve this problem, right? It would. It would actually compound the problem, and we realized that. So this is what I said to him. I go, let's look at this, okay? What would I rather have you do as a client? What would I rather have you do on this webinar right now in your own business? Would I rather have you at $50,000 and do 55 in January, 60 in February, 65 in March,